Hello everyone. I am here to share with you 10 tips and tricks that you can use for your ring planner. <clears throat> now, a lot of these focus on cutting down the bulk and maximizing the limited space that you get in a pocket size planner, but it definitely applies to other ring sizes. I have seen some things on Instagram where uh, people have sold planners that they really, really loved because there was some sort of feature or limitation with that planner that they hadn't anticipated and they really didn't want to have to let the planner go, but they just didn't see a way to make it work. So I had to put out this video. I'm still a little bit sick. I'm a little nasally. Um, I think I have a sinus infection. But bear with me because I really hope to give you guys some good information here. So for the first one, I'm actually going to put my Van Respect to the side and get out my Foxy Fix. Now, um, as some of you may know, I got pretty hot and heavy with Foxy Fix um, pocket rings a while ago. I still really like them, but I have transitioned back towards my Vanderspecs um, for various reasons. I think it's just a more finished, polished look that you get with the Vanderspecs, but the leather um, that Foxy Fix comes out with, especially the spice leather, oh my goodness, guys, it's, it's to die for. However, spice leather in particular is thin, uh, shiny, and floppy. And out of all my spice planners, my spice sage, which is this one, is the floppiest. So as is, like it literally tucks in between the rings when the planner is empty. So I have seen some people complaining that this is just too floppy. It's a gorgeous color. It feels so nice. It looks so nice, but it's too floppy. So I do this with all my Foxy Fixes, by the way, but I find it most essential in the spice leathers. So tip number one is if you are working with a planner like a Foxy Fix that has the big back pocket and you find it to be way too thin and floppy, jelly paper, my friends. So I bought a pack of this on Amazon. I got a whole bunch of it and it was like $15, which is really only a few dollars more than a lot of shops charge for just one little jelly dashboard. So if you are into this look, I definitely recommend just buying your own. It's not hard to cut a piece and punch it and put it in your planner. Or, you know, even if you use a traveler's notebook to just cut a piece and fold it and stick it in the string. Um, so with this paper, I prefer this, but you can also use stiffened felt or something like that. But I like this the best because it is thin, but it also um, gives the stability that you need. So I just took this, I cut it down to size and put it in the back pocket. Couldn't be simpler, guys. And automatically it adds some structure. Now it's still going to be floppy here, but it, the leather no longer like falls in the divots of the rings at this point. And your next step would be to just bulk up the pockets, the crisscross pockets, just tuck things in here. Um, tuck in note sheets, sticker sheets, um, deco paper, things like that. Um, in the back, you know, throw a piece of mail, throw coupons that you get for somewhere. Um, again, note sheets, sticker sheets, deco paper, something like that. And it will take this planner from being a floppy mess to having all the structure that you need um, without having to bulk up what's in the rings. So that has been an absolute lifesaver tip for me. And it can really make or break your ability to use the planner. Um, it, it's horrible to think that people are getting rid of things um, because they, they feel like they can't um, find a way to make it work even though they really want to. 
So I have found this to be extremely helpful with my Foxy Fixes in particular, but any planner with the big back pocket, um, you could do this with if you found that it was too floppy. Now, tip number two directly relates to, um, Foxy Fixes and other planners that have the elastic closure and the big back pocket. So I've seen a lot of people, including myself, complain about the bulge that comes out on the side of the planner from having the elastic knot there. So let me take this out. This is just how I store them when I'm not currently using them. So with this jelly sheet, I took a hole punch and I punched a hole. If you can see it, it's right here um, for the knot. So what I do is I feed this like that. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it does work, guys, when you have it tucked inside. My hole might be a little bit big. Okay. So you put this in here. And then you're going to tuck the jelly sheet down into the planner. And you will take the loop from the elastic and you're going to tuck it through the hole in the leather. So what this does is it keeps the knot on the jelly paper side and it minimizes the bulge that you get in the side. Now there is still a bulge, but it is nowhere near as prominent. And I have found that to be really helpful as well and just how it looks and how it feels um especially i mean these planners aren't cheap they're over a hundred dollars and especially if you have added embossing on the side you don't want to have to see a huge nasty lump there so if you're going to use the jelly sheet and then that bothers you just poke a hole in the jelly sheet and um that'll help a lot with the appearance of that knot bulge. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the side, but I am going to need it to show you another tip towards the end of my list here. Okay, now tip number three, and I don't mean to sound like a smart ass when I say this, but really guys, just don't carry any more than you need to. And when I say that, I don't mean deco. Um, we'll cover that. I mean like inserts. If you are used to being in a bound planner, um, you are probably used to carrying around a whole year at one time. Um, it's really not that practical in rings, especially in um, pocket rings if you do dailies. But even if you just do weeklies, that's more than 50 sheets of paper that you're lugging around that you don't need right away. Like there's ways to get around it. So what I do is I carry all of my months, even my past months, um, which I probably don't need to do, but um, this is on Tomo River paper, which is very, very thin paper. I drew these out bullet journal style, but even if you just um, use printables or something, there's only 12 months. Um, you're going to be printing probably double-sided, so you're using a very small amount of space. So here you have the whole year, and you can go through and write down important dates and appointments um, and then carry it over from there. You can also add um, like a future log, which is just one sheet of paper. You can use it front and back and break it down by month. And as things come up, you just write the date um, and what it is. And then when you go to set up that month in your planner, when you move all your inserts over to set up for the month, you just write in whatever you had there on that list. So it's like a list for the future, things that need to be done. Um, and it's like one or two sheets of paper. So that saves a ton of space. And then um, when your month rolls around, you add in your dailies that you need and your weeklies from um, just that one month and take out the month previous. 
If you have something important from that month that you need to remember, write it on a sticky note and just stick it in your planner somewhere, maybe on one of your dashboards or something. And then you don't have to lug around that whole past month. Like it's just, it's not necessary. And if you have a really nice memory from, um, you know, maybe a vacation, you've taken pictures and put them in there. I, I personally have a little section um, back here that is just for um, family things. So if I have something that means a lot to me um, that I don't want to archive right away, I will just stick those one or two pages in here and I can look back at them and then at another time or even at the end of the year, I can take them out and archive them with my other pages. So that alone, just carrying one month of inserts at a time, aside from your monthlies, um, really helps a lot. So that was tip number three. Number four, stuff your pockets. All right. So I used to have this in my planner, which it's not super thick, but especially when you're working with pocket size, 20 millimeter rings, little things like this really add up. I don't, I hardly ever use these. This does not have to be in the rings. These note sheets that I made, they don't have to be in the rings. It's just unnecessary bulk. So I pull out everything like this that doesn't absolutely have to be in the rings and I tuck them, for example, um, picture of my husband and I. Could I punch this and put it in the rings? Sure, but I'm not going to because it'll add bulk. My case of emergency card. I made it into a card and not a page on purpose to cut down on bulk. The lunar calendar. How often do I need this? Not very. I do like to keep track of when a full moon is coming just for um, professional reasons, <laughs> um, but this doesn't have to be in there. Bulk. This yearly calendar that I made. I almost never look at this. Now, I don't want to get rid of it because just the way I operate, as soon as I get rid of it, I'm going to wish I had it. But um, just tuck this into the pocket and it's not bulking up my rings, but I still have it with me. Um, <clears throat> I used to carry this around in the big back pocket, but I just, I took it out because I'm not using it. Like, I don't miss that at all. But note sheets like this one, I keep tucked in the back and I just pull them out as I need them. And I can punch them if I want to, or I can ollie clip or washi tape them. Yeah, guys, so cut back on what you have in your rings, but don't necessarily get rid of it. Just move it to a pocket. Um, back here, I've got a little folder filled with stickers. They don't have to be in the rings, put them in the pocket. That's why they're there. So moving on, um, tip number five, the pen loop pack. Okay. So I got this from Martha's busy little life on Instagram. Um, I noticed this on one of her planners. I messaged her about it and she showed me how this works. So, what this is, is two elastic rings that I have just super glued together. This was actually elastic off of a sleep mask that I bought that was like, I don't know, made for a child. It was like way too small for my head. So, I just cut off the elastic and um, I wrapped it around my clasp here and um, wrapped it around my pen to see how big each loop had to be and super glued them together so they're interlocked and you just slip it onto your strap and that cuts down the bulk that you would have if you were putting an extra pen loop in your insert somewhere. So until very recently, I was carrying around this dashboard um, that has this pen loop, which on this side doesn't look that bad, but on this side you can see it's pretty thick. 
really nice quality, but it was adding a lot of bulk. And the only reason I was keeping this dashboard in there is because it had the pen loop on it. So um, I was able to eliminate this because I added this to the strap. And another thing that I used to do um, when I needed an extra pen loop was put an Ollie clip in here. Now, I love Ollie clips, but they are bulky as hell. You throw a few Ollie clips inside of your planner, and it is way thicker than it needs to be. So I stopped doing that. <laughs> and um, now I've just got this one over here. It's black. It'll match any planner I have. I can move it from planner to planner. I can take it off anytime I want. Um, I can make other ones in different colors, and it's perfect for me right now. So that will help um, cut down on the bulk in your rings a lot. Tip number six is vellum. Now, um, I have several of these jelly dashboards. Like I said, I bought the material on Amazon. I think they're adorable. Like they're so pretty and sparkly and they feel so nice. I like to tap my nails on them. Um, and I've laminated my die cuts. Oof. That really adds some bulk right there. If you can avoid doing that, avoid it. But I had already done it a long time ago. And I use a little adhesive roller. And um, I can take these on and off of this jelly paper without damaging it. Move things around, change them anytime I want. And I really, really like that. So I'm not ready to give up the jelly sheets. However, um, vellum. You can buy a pack at Staples. It's not super cheap, but I have the world's cheapest. It's like a $20 printer and I can print on vellum just fine. So these are some geometric roses that I made. This is my own um, vellum design and it adds cuteness without adding bulk. Vellum is so super thin and there are so many shops out there that have to die for printable papers and printable papers are typically meant to be printed um like it's just it's deco so putting it on vellum you have that classy like translucent look where you can still see some things through it but um it's gorgeous and it's a really nice way to add deco to your planner without um bulking it up so I also, um, I print all sorts of stuff on vellum, guys. Um, but instead of having, like, a big journaling card or a big dashboard or die cuts or something, like, I just put what I want on the vellum and print it out. And I absolutely love it. So if you can um, use vellum instead of dashboards, I highly recommend it. It's going to keep your planner a lot thinner. And now one idea that I had... I haven't tried yet because I don't have color ink right now is to for example this is my <laughs> my bitch board I absolutely love this thing to die for probably my favorite place in my planner so the idea that I had I don't know how it would look when all is said and done was to take like a high-res photo of this put it to size um, like the size of an actual dashboard. So it's going to be like one photo image, print it on vellum and stick it in here instead of this bulky thing. So I would still have the appearance of it without the bulk. Now, I don't know how that would work, but if any of you guys decide to give it a try, let me know how it goes. I am probably not going to buy color ink anytime soon. <laughs> Um, I don't even know if my printer would be good enough, like, it might come out looking terrible, but if you have a more higher end, um, printer, that could work really well. So it's almost like making your own digital paper and then just print, printing it out on vellum and it'll look exactly like the dashboard that you have grown attached to over time. So that's another idea that I had. Okay. So, <clears throat> if you've done all of these things, if you have cut down to just carrying around one month of inserts, if you've moved your sticky notes and your note sheets and your sticker sheets to your um, 
back pocket and your secretarial pockets and um you know you've replaced your dashboards with vellum and who knows what or you've just you've changed as much as you're willing to change and it's still too bulky god help you if you can't get your strap um like the clasp to close that is just the worst feeling so if that is the situation you're in at this point tip number seven is to stretch your strap now i have mentioned this on my instagram several times i've mentioned it in some of my youtube videos this is something that i do to all of my strap closure planners um it sounds really scary it's gonna feel real scary and it always will like in that moment i'm always saying to myself Oh, I hope this isn't the time I messed it up. I hope I didn't suddenly get stronger or something and I break something. But um, I've done this on my Vanderspecs, which are very high quality planners. And I've done it on my AliExpress, like $30 planners. And it's been fine all the way around. The only time this wasn't fine was um, I did it to one of my Maldens and I had stretched the strap um, and I should have left well enough alone, but my mom, who is incredibly strong, I was like, oh, ma, see if you can stretch this a little bit more for me. I will not give it to my husband to do because I know for a fact he's just a brute. He is way too strong. Um, but I thought it would be safe with my mom and my mom went like Hulk on my Malden strap and yanked it right off. Oh my God. So <laughs> I should have left well enough alone, but, um, that's neither here nor there. If you are gentle, you can definitely stretch your strap with no problem at all. What you need to do is get a little cup, mix like a teaspoon of rubbing alcohol and two teaspoons of water. Dilute the rubbing alcohol and you're going to like dab your fingers in it and uh, or dip your fingers in it and dab it along the strap um, inside and outside. Just get it damp. And then um, I would empty out your planner, but for the sake of example, you're going to hold it down because on the back, it is sewn here. So you can hold it either way, upside down or whatever. You can hold it this way, or you can flip the planner upside down so that you're looking at the outside and put your hand right here. But you're going to want to put pressure over where it is sewed on. So, like, with all your body weight, you're going to push down on where the strap is sewn in, and then you're just going to pull. Like I said, don't go Hulk. Don't be my mother. <laughs> don't go too crazy. Um, you can always re-dab it and um, do it again. Now, all the leather that I have done this on, it has not been a problem. I know that some people get, like, watermarks and water stains on their leather, I don't know if it's the mixing of the alcohol with the water, but I, I haven't had any stains occur from this. If that is a concern of yours, just don't do it, guys. If you don't feel comfortable, just don't do it. But I want you to know that it does seem scarier than it actually is. As long as you're in control of yourself and you're doing it yourself, it'll be fine. And if you've done it and it's just not stretching don't worry about it. Don't give it up or just give it up. Don't, you know, mess something up because, um, <laughs> you end up going ape shit on your planner. Not worth it, but I can usually get a good centimeter out of it at the very least. And it doesn't really change the way the strap looks, but it gives me quite a bit more room as far as getting up over my pens and over the chunk that is in my rings. Um, if you ever, need some advice um about stretching the strap you can contact me um you can comment here or message me on instagram and i would be more than happy to talk you through it um oh sorry i'm thirsty um one thing i am not willing to do is have you mail it to me and have me stretch it for you mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. Nope, I'm not that confident. I would feel terrible if I ruined somebody's planner. Um, and I just, oof, I don't want to do that. But I would love to give you guys advice. 
if that is a route that you want to take, keep it in mind. I've done this to, oh boy, counting planners that I've sold. Probably close to 10 planners. And the only one that's ever had a problem was the one that I already stretched on my own. And then I tried to have my mom do it. And I somehow forgot that my mom is like freakishly strong. Um, so, yeah. I have pretty good, pretty good luck with that. Sorry guys, I'm consulting a list here. I tried to be like really prepared for this one, so I didn't forget anything. So all else fails, stretch the strap. That was tip number seven. Okay, so now just going on to miscellaneous tips. Um, so <clears throat> especially towards the front here, you can see that things start to bend when you have your planner really full and, and things are towards the outside. So tip number eight is to set up your planner so that the part you write in the most is um, in the center. So I keep my weeklies and my dailies towards the middle of my planner. It will keep them from bending and it makes it more comfortable to lay your hand and write. So I personally try to open my rings as little as possible. A, I don't want to mess up the ring mechanism. I'm willing to DIY a lot of things on my planner, but I really don't want to have to change out the rings. Um, so I don't open them any more than I have to. Plus, I keep it so full that a lot of times when the rings pop open, stuff falls out of there and it's just a giant pain and I get annoyed. So, um, these are my dailies. This is what I write in the most. My weeklies are dispersed. Like here's one, uh, for next week in my dailies now, just because of the inserts I'm using. These are from Justinia Plans on Etsy and I'm absolutely loving them guys. Um, so that's the part that I write in the most and it's right in the middle of my planner for the most part, give or take. So I find it much more comfortable to write in it when the section is in the middle. Now, sometimes there are things I need to do like back here. I'll take notes. Now, that's not super comfy. Like this side would be okay, but this is like, ugh. You're writing at a weird angle. I don't know. It's just not very comfortable. So I like to keep um, what I need access to the most right in the middle for comfort and for ease. And frankly, um, my handwriting looks better <laughs> when I'm on a nice uh, flat surface. Um, okay, so this one I just did the other day, number nine. Um... When I took this dashboard out of my planner, this was not blank. No, no, no. I had die cuts all over it, just like I do back here. Um, I, oh, my snape is falling off. There we go. So um, I really liked the die cuts that I had here, and I didn't want to give them up. So because I use this jelly paper, I have scraps like this just laying around can't make a dashboard out of them i guess you can make like a bookmark or something but like i'm not gonna throw this away i knew i would find a use for it eventually so if you do buy the jelly paper or if you have leftover acetate if you have made um let me see where are they like this if you have made um nice dashboards out of like glitter or stickers, things like that. Um, you can keep the pieces you're left with like these and you can use these scraps to make, it's almost like a deco dashboard for your pockets. So I have one in the front here. This is just jelly paper. I cut it to size. I rounded the corners using this little punch that I got on Amazon. I just like the look of rounded corners, so I round all my corners. It's really not essential. But um, I took this little scrap, I put my little laminated die cut that was from 
my dashboard I'm no longer using, and I tuck it right in the pocket. I don't need clips. I don't need, oh God, glue. I would never use glue on my leather. That's a scary thought. Um, and it's right there. It's not going anywhere and it looks super cute. And, um, a lot of planners have, um, these, I don't know if you can tell in this light, but these are credit card pockets. I only use my planner as a wallet when I'm on vacation. Um, otherwise I just stick random things back here. Now, instead of using the, um, like the bow clips and the little felt embroidered clips and really bulky stuff like that. Um, you can just tuck a piece of jelly paper or laminate or acetate and stick some die cuts to it. And you still got the cuteness. Um, it looks really cute, I think. And it doesn't add a ton of bulk and you get to use things that you have thinned out from inside of the rings um so that you you don't have to completely give them up so this is layered this is two different die cuts from the honeybee shop and um like I'm so glad that I thought of this because I really didn't want to have to let these go but I needed to get rid of this dashboard um so yeah that is another little tip that I have and um sticky notes also fit well in these little pockets i trimmed this down yesterday this is almost like not usable you can only write a couple of things on here now i um custom made these sticky notes with a little drawing of my dog but um for this particular planner it was a little bit too wide and then i got thinking if i trim down the top i'll see more of my die cuts here so i ended up just cutting it until I liked the dimensions and um isn't that cute <laughs> um so there's my little Kevin sticky notes that I can't live without um so that's another thing guys your sticky notes you don't have to load up your inserts and your dashboards with sticky notes put them on the outside in the pocket so you're not bulking up the ring part so that you can fit your actual inserts in the ring part um, and my last tip is dash cards and Ollie clips. So if you are using a planner like this, I mean, A, they're pretty, but also they're functional. So these little Ollie clips, they're not cheap. They're like $10, 12 a piece for the big ones. Um, but they're really pretty. They have them in a ton of different designs and they have sales pretty frequently. Um, so you can take a list, like for example, my list of tips for the video, um, right to the front of your planner. You don't even have to open it up. So grocery lists, short little to-dos. Um, I personally, I don't open my planner in public more than I have to because I'm afraid I'm going to drop it. Like you're never going to see me walking through the store um, opened up to like a page with this laying in the front of my cart. Hell no. I'll knock it over with a gallon of milk. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. But I'll have it in my bag. And with a list like this on the front, I don't have to open it. I can just peek inside of my bag and see everything that I need to see. I can lay this on the counter and see what I need to see as I'm getting ready. So having an Ollie clip on the front of um, these clasp strap closure planners can be a lifesaver. Now, if you're not using a planner with a clasp closure, or actually this one's not going to work because I don't have the string in it. Bear with me, guys. Okay, so here's one where I left the elastic in. Um, this is a Lush Plum Cake, by the way. It's still a Foxy Fix, and I painted the edges purple to seal them in a little bit and make them more durable. So, side note, um, if you're using a planner like this that has an elastic closure, I mean, you could still do the alley clip, but then you're going to have to tuck the paper under the alley clip and under the elastic. Um, you can slip your note pages just like that and hold them there like that. Or if you're using sticky notes, do I have a sticky note handy? Um... 
Okay, here's just a random nothing special sticky note. So. We'll put. Um, bye. Cereal. I don't know. Um, this is just a journaling card that I got as a freebie. I mean, you can make a dash card out of literally anything you want, guys. Sticker samplers, um, leftover, like how pretty is this, um, from bunny plans, leftover vellum, just pieces of laminator sheet, whatever. Um, stick it on the front of this card because again, I don't like putting adhesives on my leather and tuck it under here. And there's your dash card. So you can stick things on and off, put as many notes as you want, and it's reusable because it's laminated and it's not going to damage anything. And again, you don't have to leave your planner out in your shopping cart or in your front seat or whatever with it open. You can put it in your bag, like put it on the top so you can still see it. And here it is, everything that you need to know. Um, you could also do this... Um, You'd want to do it a little bit smaller. I think I have one here. I always say that. I think I have one. That's not true. I know I have one. It's just a matter of can I get it quickly while I'm on camera. <laughs> okay. So. <clears throat> as everything is falling on top of us. Okay. So this is one. This was from Kenley's Doodle Box. And, um this uh, decal was too. And these are actually a little washi, um, like a small amount of purple washi I put on there in case I needed it on the go. So I could take this and tuck it here if I wanted to. And so, okay, let's do this the right way. I could put a sticky note on here and tuck it under there so that I could still use sticky notes even with a planner like this. So dash cards, again guys, they're one of those things that they're super useful. They can be very pretty. If you can just tuck in a pocket, you really don't have to put it in the actual rings. So um, you have plenty of room for your inserts and the things that really matter. So. I have quite a bit in my planner. Um, I lug around everything I need, plus a fair amount that I don't, that is just pretty and makes me happy and makes me want to use my planner. Um, and I've made it work. The other day when I came back from vacation, it felt really hefty to me. And that's because um, I upgraded the kind of uh, printer paper that I'm using so that there's no bleed through and it feels so nice like if a piece of paper could feel sexual this paper feels quite sexual <laughs> um it's very very nice now clips i try to limit i do have a black deathly hallows clip in here that i use um to show my current month this pink one right here is another deathly hallows clip that is here purely for the purpose of this video so that I don't accidentally flip open to my budget section. But I'm going to take it out now. Um, so if you can limit your clips as well, like I said, Ollie clips are a big one. Um, and like I've got a few dangles, like I let myself have some cuteness, but nothing extreme. It will really help cut down on the bulk. And make it so that you can truly use your planner in the most functional way possible. So I hope that these tips and tricks have been helpful to you guys. Maybe have inspired you to move some things around. A lot of it isn't about getting rid of things. It's about finding the right place for them. So that your planner, um, the ring mechanisms aren't as full as they once were. Um, but you can still carry around what you need and what you love. So if you need any help, especially stretching the strap, if you decide to go that route, please shoot me a message. Um, I would love to help you out and uh, give you some further instruction. Um, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. 
I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you found anything here that really helped you. I would really like um, some feedback if what I have shared has benefited anyone. That would mean a lot to me. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.